Our mission? Flood the Earth. How? First we obtain a meteorite and flood a volcano. Then we violently seize control of a weather institute and locate an ancient Pokemon that's been asleep for thousands of years. Then we ruthlessly invade Slayport, hijack a submarine, wake up a god, and make it rain. Endlessly. I'm a fucking genius. Why, why don't we just capture like 20 Politoes and do it that way? Well, well that was easy. What is going on guys, this is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And well, part 2 is finally here. And the reason why it took forever to make is because it has a ton of editing and research behind it. But trust me, it was definitely worth the wait. And if you haven't watched the first part of the current history era, click on the video here or down below in the description. And remember, the more likes this video gets, the faster the next episode comes out. And I probably should have mentioned this in my last video, but I am adding manga events to the timeline. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's get started. Is this the end? How could this be? I have this Squirtle, you'll see. I'll become the best Pokemon trainer in the whole world! Such a weak trainer before. Oh, I'm way too strong. I stand right here at the top of the Pokemon League! Do you know what that means, Red? It means that I am the most powerful trainer in the world! Blaine, gym leader of Cinnabar Island, sprouts out of nowhere and saves Red from the psychic tornado. Red not knowing why he's here, Blaine explains that he's part of the reason why this terrifying monster exists in this unfair world. Sir, we don't have enough DNA from the legendary Pokemon Mew in order to complete the ultimate weapon. I see. You there, come here. Put your arm out. What? You're gonna be a hero to Team Rocket. Now do what I say so we can finish what we started. No! 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 They stole Blaine's DNA and extracted it into Mewtwo, which explains why Mewtwo looks part human. In the act of taking his DNA, Mewtwo's corrupt cells found their way into Blaine's veins. This caused Blaine's arm to mutate, which will eventually spread and kill him. At the same time, the shared cells create a bond between Blaine and Mewtwo, allowing Blaine to track Mewtwo wherever he is. Declaring his fearless resolve in spite of Team Rocket hunting him down, Blaine commands his Rapidash to trap Red in a vortex of fire. During this, Red notices that Blaine is holding a Master Ball, the most powerful Pokeball of all time. Red tries to tell Blaine that he isn't strong enough to take down Mewtwo, and that he should let him help him. Blaine ignores him, and calls out his most powerful Pokemon, Arcanine, and the fight between Creator and Creation begins. Immediately, Blaine commands Arcana to use a powerful Fire Blast. Mewtwo sees it coming, and easily reflects it with Protect. It fires back with a powerful psychic attack. Knowing that Arcana is in trouble, Blaine calls out all of his electrodes and throws them in the air above Mewtwo and orders them all to explode. Mewtwo reads the call and uses teleport at the last second and retaliates with his most powerful attack, Psy Strike. Red knowing that Blaine wouldn't survive this, he calls out his blast with to extinguish the fire with rapid spin. Reacting quickly, he summons his most powerful Pokemon, Snorlax, to take the Psy Strike head on. Blaine partially injured, Red orders his Pikachu to take the Master Ball and to prepare for battle. Blaine, with almost no life in him, tells Red that Mewtwo is the ultimate weapon and not even a Master Ball could get near him. To Blaine's surprise, Red calls out all of his Pokemon and orders them all to charge Mewtwo. Without hesitation, Mewtwo summons another Psychic Tornado to blow them all away. Suddenly, shocking Mewtwo, Red is in the air above him on his air dash and commands Pikachu to drop down and throw the Master Ball. Not having time to react, Mewtwo prepares for the Master Ball. 
It wiggles once. It violently shakes twice. A third time. Me Too has been captured. After finally catching the legendary monster and completing his Pokedex, Red hands the Master Ball to Blaine and makes his way to Mount Silver for intense training. It's been a thousand years since Groudon and Kyogre were awakened, and finally, Team Aqua and Magma locate the two legendary Pokemon and reawaken them. This reawakening causes havoc throughout the Hoenn region. Word spreads quickly that it's the beginning of the end. To stop this madness, all the gym leaders and powerful trainers are called out to help the citizens of Hoenn. In order to fight these two ancient monsters, the gym leaders split up. Watson and Flannery fight Kyogre, while Brawly and Roxanne fight Groudon. With all the chaos happening in the region, Norman agrees to train Wally and flies him to an ancient place known as Sky Pillar. Back in Pseudopolis City, it is found out that the leaders of Team Aqua and Magma are being possessed by the red and blue orbs. Drawn by the power of the orbs, the two legendary monsters head to the city to battle it out. Knowing this, Ruby, Sapphire, Steven, and the Elite Four all head to the city to help defend the people. Upon arrival, Archie and Maxi are there to battle Ruby and Sapphire for meddling with their plans. Suddenly, a meteor fragment that Sapphire dropped starts glowing on the floor. They soon realize that the meteor fragment has the power to control nature, and that they could use this to turn Archie and Maxi back to normal. Directing its power towards the two evil leaders, a sudden explosion of massive energy engulfs Sudapola City. This explosion consumes Ruby, Sapphire, and everyone else who was caught in it. During the explosion, Ruby disappears in a bright light. Sapphire, on the other hand, is saved by Steven while riding on a Metagross that's using Reflect. After the explosion, Sapphire hands a letter to Steven written by his father explaining how to awaken the legendary Regis. Gaining the knowledge of this ancient spell, they start their way to awaken the legendary Pokemon in hopes that it would help them save the world. Completing the task of catching Waylord and Relicanth, Steven reads the completed spell out loud, which causes three glowing lights to beam out in the sky. Signifying that the Regis have been awakened, a sudden explosion of the ancient spell completely engulfs Sapphire. Later, Ruby and Sapphire awaken in a different location. They would later find out that they were teleported to Mirage Island, along with Juan, Tate, and Liza. The three gym leaders undergo great training upon the two young heroes. During this, Norman reveals the reason why he accepted Wally's request of his training. He wanted Wally to awaken the legendary worship Pokemon, Rayquaza. After doing so, Norman flies off on Rayquaza while leaving Flygon with Wally. After intense training, Sapphire confesses her true feelings for Ruby, and Ruby does the same. While leaving the island, Ruby traps Sapphire in Wallace's air car to protect her so that nothing would happen to her. Meanwhile, Courtney betrays Team Magma because the reawakening of Kyogre and Groudon was beyond her expectations and amusement. Because of this, she joins Ruby, Norman, Steven, the Regis, and Rayquaza in order to stop Groudon and Kyogre. The fight takes place for hours, and in this process, Norman, Courtney, and Steven all die from different causes. Eventually, the two beasts were calmed down and were commanded to go back into slumber. Ruby, surprising everyone, calls out his Celebi that he captured back in Johto and asks it to revive the three trainers who perished. The blue and red orbs are then transformed into gems and shot out in the sky, symbolizing the war was over. Team Rocket is not done. And there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like if you did. I appreciate it a ton. And remember, the more likes this video gets, the faster the next episode comes out. And also, if you're enjoying the channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter for fan interactions, video updates, and other cool stuff, follow me at Ethan Dobbs. And for the question of the day, 
Who do you think will win between Me Too and Deoxys? Be sure to let me know down below in the comments. I can't wait to see what you guys have in mind. And I'll see you all next time. See ya.